Good morning, everybody. Record Arendelle here. Today is January 12, 2020, and I'm doing a quick video, uh, mostly in regard to the date of January 11 and uh, what it means to me. So, I'm kind of big into numerology. Uh, a lot of people will tell you that it's stupid, but um, <clears throat> I notice number sequences a lot in my life. Some would say it's the way that the universe communicates with me and gives me clues. Uh, either way, I find it to be interesting and it happens a lot. So, yesterday was January 11, that's 111. And I like to use a website called Angel Scribes to look up what the numbers mean. Um, <clears throat> if you're going to use a source for information, I think you should find a source that makes you feel good. So, Angel Scribes generally makes you feel pretty good. So, maybe it's biased, who cares? We have a choice of what we're going to be biased by. Might as well be biased by positive things. So, on the Angel Scribes website, 111 means basically an energy portal has been opened up for you and that means that the universe has taken a snapshot of your thoughts your feelings your emotions your expectations and your desires and it's going to start manifesting those things into your life um sorry i just <laughs> the timer said one 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 right when i said that last sentence which was interesting <clears throat> but um yeah so yesterday one 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 I've had a, you know, quite a few realizations recently that um, I mentioned previously. Number one, um, nothing's really that important. This is all just kind of a, a farce, a fiction, a, a, an entertaining film or movie for God, essentially. <clears throat> so nothing that you do really matters all that much. Uh, we shouldn't try to lord it over the world. That's what causes anxiety. That's what causes issues. As soon as we uh, sit back, they say let go and let God, and that's a very Christian phrase, but it basically means that you should stop trying to take credit for your successes or your failures because they're going to happen. Just do your best in every moment and not think about the uh, outcome, okay? So that's number one. <clears throat> Nothing really matters that much. Number two is the realization that Maya, everything around us, is designed to make us suffer only for one reason, to return back to God, to bring our spirituality back. So... When you're having a hard time, if you can remember that, you can be grateful for the hard time because it makes you appreciate um, your creator again. And if you're having a good time, you can be grateful for the good time and you can also appreciate your creator. So it's a wonderful feedback system if you learn how to program yourself correctly. And the mind is a programmable tool. So you learn how to program your tool and uh, every situation can make you closer to God, which is the goal. <clears throat> um, the last thing is basically you should always be thinking about God, um, sacrificing all of your actions, all of your senses. If you smell something wonderful, say thank you, I smell this, because I was gifted from God to be able to smell. So I'm sharing the experience with God of the smell, and I'm enjoying it myself. So number one, <clears throat> nothing matters that much because you're not really responsible for anything. Number two, Everything that happens is only intended to uh, take you closer to God anyway, whether it's positive or negative in your mind, doesn't matter, as long as you remember to be closer to God because of it. And the last one is you should try to be closer to God every moment, all the time. Um, I like to remember that whenever people are in desperate situations, they always pray. They're always desperate. They always reach out for something higher than them. And I would say, be desperate for God all the time. That is kind of uh, what some people say is uh, the key to enlightenment now with before you die. It's called Bhakti Yoga. B-H-A-K-T-I. Bhakti. And it, basically it's devotional service, sacrificing every action, every sense to God in every moment. So <clears throat> that's number one. Um, I was thinking with 111 that I want to try to become even more uh, Bhakti and 2020. I want to basically serve God in every moment. So I thought about my book. My book that I wrote, um, I've been meaning for a while to give a brief summary on YouTube about it. And uh, I came up with a system yesterday to do it. So there's a thing called Talaka. I could be pronouncing it incorrectly, but it's where you put religious markings on your body to uh, basically show others and yourself that your body is a temple for God to reside there, for soul, for energy to reside, 
And I was thinking that um, there was a time back in the day I used to draw things on myself as reminders of how I should act during the day. So it clicked. I'm going to combine this uh, <clears throat> Talaka tradition from Hinduism with uh, teachings from my book. So I, I came up with 12 phrases, 12 words, 12 sentences that uh, t tell me and remind me how to act during the day to uh, quote unquote purify myself. Another way of purification is to basically build energy in your body. See, we're not really these physical bodies, we're souls which are made of energy that uh, are controlling these physical bodies. So the goal of the day, of every day, <laughs> is to remember that you're not this material body, you are the soul, you're the energy inside, to build the energy, to purify the pathway of the energy going from your crown through your root chakra and back, back and forth, the whole light body, and manifesting a paradise for you and for everyone else. So classic religious principles are ways of um, purifying your chakras and making this energy flow faster and easier and smoother, and they call it purification. Like everyone knows that fasting purifies your body. Well, my book talks about more than one way to purify your body or to build your energy because they're synonymous. They're the same thing, uh, just different terminology, just semantics. So I decided to start writing these... Uh, markings on my body again because I want to remember my teachings even though I wrote the book sometimes you forget all of them so I came up with 12 first one is S I don't know if you can see it very well S stands for stillness if you can remember during the day to sit still to stand still to waste as little energy as possible on unnecessary movements you automatically save a lot of energy. You automatically become closer to God. So I like to use the S as stillness. When you are still, you can sometimes hear the OM sound, but you can certainly feel energy in your body, and you can take a moment to remember God and uh, be grateful to God for everything. So stillness is number one. Stoic, number two, S, number two. <clears throat> Stoic is basically not reacting to emotions. Now, when I say not reacting, I do not mean that you don't have them, that you suppress them, pretend they're not there. I mean the exact opposite. Dwell on the emotion, dwell on the feeling, the thought that brought the emotion about, but don't act out physically. Don't throw a tantrum, don't yell at somebody, don't throw, um, I don't kick a wall, etc. Just hold the energy inside your body. Uh, preferably, you can channel it up to your third eye or your crown. I like to think of uh, the center of my head a lot of the day. Um, we'll go into the reasons for that later, but basically I want to put energy into my head, the center of my head, like back where the uh, pituitary gland and the, uh, <clears throat> I can't think of the gland right now, doesn't matter. Uh, I'd like to think of the center of my head and my third eye and my crown. So stoic, when you have emotions, when you have feelings, don't just waste the energy and let them out. Keep it in. Uh, number three, M. In this particular instance, um, I use that mantra. So, you know, I'm big on mantras. So I use a mantra that is uh, regarding God's names. And I really don't like telling people the mantra unless they ask me because I don't want people to feel like uh, they can't do this practice due to having different faith. Uh, you could use the rosary if you're Catholic. Mantras are anything that you like to tell yourself during the day um, re repetitively to bring about a certain goal. So I use God's names. Um, some people might not believe that my names I'm using are God, so I'm not going to say it out loud. But M is for mantra. Repeat a mantra in your head as much as possible to bring yourself closer to God. <clears throat> Next one is T, temple. Um, not like I'm going to church, but like my body is my temple. I reside in this body, and God resides in this body as well. So I'm going to try to minimize putting impure things into this body, like cigarettes, alcohol, marijuana, cocaine, caffeine, all these substances that the human body does not need to function. We're talking about minimizing things that you do not need. So... I'm not saying never drink again or never smoke again. I'm just saying try to minimize it. This is your temple. Try to keep it clean. Try to keep it organized and nice. <clears throat> Next one is L. 
L is lust. Um, sexual energy, very powerful. Power of creation, Kundalini. But it's very, very easy to let it take control of you. You can waste your energy. You can exploit sexuality and have a good time and then uh, have less energy because of it or your energy is being wasted in the wrong things. Um, we could go into a lot about Kundalini, but I use L for lust, first of all, for material lust. I'm not going to try to be lusty over women and men. I'm trying not to be lusty over anything. I don't want to buy <clears throat> a brand new car if I don't need it. So lust is also desire for me. I like to think of lust first because that's the hardest one. Sexual desire is the most difficult one for me to um, keep back, I guess, besides drugs, but that's a different letter. So lust for sexuality, <clears throat> but also I use that to remember desire. You should try to minimize your desires for material things um, because everything that you get, you are using energy to attain it, essentially. So if you want to save your energy, uh, don't try to get unnecessary things. So next, on the other hand, I have T for truth. Uh, if you're going to speak, you should always speak honestly. You should always speak truthfully. Uh, when you do this, it's actually, uh, it builds your energy and it creates a situation, a certain siddha. Siddha is uh, a term for a superhuman power. When you begin to only speak truth, things happen automatically if you say they're going to happen. It's like the universe, again, took a snapshot of your thoughts, feelings, and decided to make them happen for you. So, <clears throat> you I just say that you're using energy whenever you desire something, but you can't stop desire. But you can choose to desire better things. And uh, energy can go toward that versus toward things that you don't need that are going to go away eventually. So, speak truth. Next one is G for gossip. Don't do it. If you waste energy on gossip, uh, you're you're walking backwards, and also you're hurting other people. You should never hurt other people if you can avoid it. So gossiping always hurts other people. So try not to gossip. K for kindness. If you're going to be speaking, you should try to make it kind. There's always a nicer way to say things that um, they at first pop in your head in a certain way, and then you want to blurt it out, but you could refine it and make it come out in a kind way. Even critiques can be kind. I get critiqued all the time at work. Some people do it well, some people don't. It's my job not to get offended, but it's their job to try to be kind when they do it. So that's a good um, thing to remember if you can. Next one is M. I like mute. Now I chose the word mute instead of silence or quiet because mute infers Oh, I'm sorry, that, not the, that might not be the right word, implies that it's an action. I'm choosing to be silent as much as possible. Um, people don't really care about your opinions that much unless they log on to your channel and they want to listen or if they ask you for your opinion. So in general, telling people your opinions and your thoughts is a waste of your energy and a waste of their time. And a little judgy for it anyway. <laughs> so in general, it's much better to be mute as much as possible until someone asks you to speak or give an opinion. Um, the next one is P for prayer. I, uh, I like this one because it reminds you to talk to God all the time. There should never be a moment in your life where you forget about God. So these all have the same goal to remember that <laughs> the three things again um, – Nothing's all that important because God is controlling everything. It's all predestined. <clears throat> number two, um, if you're suffering, that's because Maya is doing its job. And number three, even when everything is perfect, you should always try to remember God in every moment. So prayer is a big one. I like to uh, I like to talk to God like he's right here. He's my buddy. Or she. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Source. Next one. T again. Temperance. You already know that I'm big on uh, breatharianism, but the whole purpose of breatharianism is to try to uh, bring in your lust and desire for food. <clears throat> um, by far, sexuality, drugs, and food are my three biggest energy drainers. Some people might call energy draining sin. I don't like the word sin because it's biases and dogma from different religious backgrounds, but anything that lowers your energy or makes you more connected to material life, 
or forgets God or hurts somebody. Those are the basic sins in my, you know, humble opinion. So temperance reminds me to only do as little as necessary as far as sense, enjoyment, and pleasure as in regard to food. I try to minimize my food, try to minimize my uh, intake um, because it is a problem for me. You know, I don't want to be 400 pounds <laughs> and die when I'm 60 from bad habits. I like to uh, live for God and do it in a, in a way that is respectable. Last one of the 12 is S for sacrifice. I already said it a few times, but you should sacrifice everything all the time in the name of God. Sacrifice um, the flavor for God. Say, thank you, Lord, for this food. I lovingly and humbly offer it as sacrifice unto you. May you enjoy it first and then enjoy it again through my senses. Thank you for my senses. Thank you for the food. Um, that's just a little prayer that I like to do before I eat anything. Um, but sacrifice, you know, if you're if you're having, uh, well, <laughs> the first thought came to my mind was a sexual encounter. You can be thankful for that, and you can share that experience with your creator because you have those parts because of the creator giving them to you. Um, people think that it's wrong to have that, but uh, I would respectfully disagree. Share your good experiences and your bad experiences. Sacrifice basically means experiencing something on the behalf of someone else. So it doesn't mean that you have to give up chicken. It means that uh, you are aware that you are experiencing something on the behalf of someone else. So you're sacrificing all of your experiences for God. That is what you call uh, devotional service. That's what you call bhakti yoga. Okay, this video is almost 17 minutes. I did not mean to make it long, but I got everything out there. Thank you so much for watching. I, uh, I hope you have questions. I would love to talk to you more about this. And that's where I am as far as 111. Take care, everybody.